Good morning, folks. We've got all the hurricane information available at this time. We've got solar storm energy coming down to meet them, various other science stories to hit, but we're starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. The sunspot group on the south is not developing. Umbra remain tiny and are not flaring at all. You can see the coronal holes on the Earth-facing half, and while we'll magnetically connect to that incoming southern opening soon, the departing northern holes have already impacted. The solar wind shows us inside the coronal hole stream this morning, but luckily it has stabilized along with having lower density, and that geomagnetic storm which peaked at level 2 waned away by day's end. It wasn't until day's end, however, that the ionospheric storm began to peak. Remember our timing of the storm energy and how it descends, and now that ionospheric energy is going to integrate with the global electric circuit. The high and low pressure columns of the atmosphere where the storms return that energy to the ionosphere after it has descended down through the high pressure. Looking to the lithosphere quickly, it was a day off from six pointers finally, but a new volcano eruption began, that one we put on alert a few days ago in Alaska. Let's go next to the weather. We're starting with a lightning return for Hurricane Florence on approach to the east coast. I've thrown both the Euro and GFS models up here to show how well they agree on impact timing and location. There isn't much to say beyond the fact that this is the highest weather warning for the region. Hopefully Georgians as well have noted the more southward pole. Quick look at Hawaii. Landfall is a few hours away as of this morning and with it will come the wind and the rain. And of course, the Philippine Sea is also active as a powerful typhoon races westward over the coming days. That one's forecast is ticking southward as well. Folks, let's take a peek at a binary solar system, close binaries like Tatooine, and hear about the destruction of their planets. Certain conditions favor the nudging of a large inner planet closer and closer to one of the binaries until it is completely torn apart. This tends to be most likely if one of the binaries is about twice as big as the Sun, with its counterpart being much less dense. Let's go to the galactic magnetic fields where a new public model has been released and appears to be the type of thing that could be utilized to do more realistic electromagnetic monitoring and modeling of our cosmic community. Milky Way fields looking to have the large-scale structure that can only come from an energetic powerhouse core and orbiting sphere magnets. We call those stars. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.